So the book that we're going to read today is called The Keeper of Wild Words. And it's a story about a girl and her grandma really going out into the world and finding wild words, words that need to be kept and shared so that they stay part of us and the way that we think about the world. So I'm going to read The Keeper of Wild Words by Brooke Smith, illustrated by Madeline Clover. And I'm going to take off the dust cover. So that's what this part of the book is called, the paper outside part. So I can hold on to the book a little bit more with a little more security. Um, but also I wanted to show you without the dust cover on it, this book has this beautiful artwork. So we can think about nature and things in the wild in terms of words and art. And isn't that really what a good storybook is? It's just words and art. Yeah. Okay. So let's dive in to the keeper of wild words. It's a really neat little book. At the end of a long cinder lane, surrounded by meadows and pine trees and sky, that wrapped around and back again. Brooke ran up to her grandmother's door, swung it open, and she belonged. Mimi, I'm here. Isn't that a nice way of saying that? She got to her grandma's house and she belonged. Isn't that what we all kind of want to feel? We just want to feel like we belong when we get somewhere. Brooke called her grandmother Mimi. She wasn't just a grandmother. She was a grand friend. So you can see Brooke here. You can see Mimi, her grandma, here. Mimi had been waiting. She's sitting at her desk all day, distracted by a hummingbird, a wasp's nest, a red-tailed hawk hovering overhead. Mimi was a writer. She wove words into everything, everything that mattered. So we can see the things that Mimi is seeing out her window. We can see the hummingbird and we can see the red-tailed hawk. If we go back to the other side, we can see the wasp's nest that she mentioned too. So she's seeing all of those things out her window. And it's easy to get distracted looking at that stuff. Brooke was so excited to be visiting. She needed Mimi's help. Tomorrow was the first day of school and Brooke had nothing for show and tell. So she's here, she's excited to see her and she needs Mimi's help. Shelf here. Her summer had been wonderful, but she didn't have one special thing to share that her friends would always remember. So Brooke has to go to school for the first day. She needs something for show and tell. Have you ever done show and tell at school? Did you ever feel kind of stressed out about what you were going to bring and what you were going to talk about? Maybe you didn't feel ready. Sometimes not feeling ready can make us feel really nervous about something. So we reach out for help. So Brooke is talking to Mimi and she <clears throat> says this, but today Mimi needed Brooke's help too. She had something important to ask her. I'm afraid some of my favorite words are disappearing. Some of the wild words that I've known and loved my whole life. So Brooke needs Mimi's help and Mimi needs her help too. Some of the wild words that she's known and loved her whole life are disappearing. Can you think of any wild words that you love? Go think about it. What is a wild word? Mimi says, Brooke says, how do words disappear? She wondered. Words disappear if we don't share them when we talk, if we don't write them in our stories, if we don't read them in our books. And you can see Mimi's got a big bookshelf full of books. If we don't use words, they can be forgotten. And if they're forgotten, 
they disappear. So how do we use words? We say them and we write them down. We don't have to worry about them looking or sounding pretty, right? Our handwriting or the way that we say them. Maybe if we learned a word in a book, we might not pronounce it the way that everybody else pronounces it, but that's okay because we want to use those words and keep them around. I need someone to keep them safe, she continued, to help remember. I need you to be my keeper, the keeper of wild words. Can I wear a crown? Brooke asked. No, Mimi laughed. The keeper doesn't need a crown. She just needs to keep her eyes wide open and be ready to see and hear and feel all the wild words. That way, she'll always remember them. Let's see if we're thinking about that. Look. So we've got a list of wild words here. And then Mimi says, from sun up to sundown, we'll walk and run and walk again, sit and wait, listen and touch until we find every word on the list, said Mimi, or every word on the list finds us. So it sounds like they're gonna go on an adventure. I'm ready, said Brooke, and they were off. And sure enough, as soon as they stepped into the morning, wild words were waiting. A wren sang a good morning song, a little brown bird with a voice like an angel, sitting up high, looking down, just waiting to say hello to the world. So we found our first wild word, and it was a wren. It starts with a W. Bunches of violets spread underfoot. Sweet perfume filled the air, almost making Brooke dizzy. Their little purple faces smiled, inviting the day to begin. So you can see them finding violets, purple flower. Poppies in the corner of the yard suddenly popped open, paper petals reaching to the sun. So we found poppies and violets under the sunshine. And bushes filled with blackberries, just like the ones Brooke had eaten for breakfast. Hundreds still waiting to be picked and enjoyed for dessert. So a meal at the beginning of the day and the end of the day. Do wild words dance like this every morning? She's got her list. They're looking. Along the way, Brooke picked up an acorn that fell from a mighty oak. Big towering oak tree, little nut with a tiny brown hat, smooth round shell. She put it in her pocket to remember. So she found an acorn, she kept it with her to remember. Up ahead, they saw light reflected in a round mirror of water, the pond. Oh my gosh, they got to the pond. This is gonna be good. When Brooke scoops up a handful of water, silver minnows swam circles in her palm, now a pool. Whoever knew she could hold the wild. So she's holding a tiny little pond in her hands. Then splash, silence broken. A beaver jumped in and then under he went, swimming towards his den, climbing up on the other side of the pond, then disappearing from view. It's sure busy around here, Brooke said. Always, Mimi answered. I don't know if you've ever seen a beaver in person. I don't know if I've seen one in LA. Bushels of mint surrounded the pond, Mimi picked stems and rubbed the leaves in her fingers. Brooke picked up a leaf and put it in her mouth. Fresh, sweet, tangy. From the ground, from the earth, she could taste the wild. I always like doing that in the nature garden at work. We have a few plants that you can rub the leaves between your fingers and then smell. I really like doing that with pineapple sage. It's neat because it smells like pineapple. Then one last visitor waddled by, green velvet head, bright yellow beak, Mr. Drake, Papa Duck, running, quack, quack, run. 
Lift off, wings out. There he goes. So we can see we've got this side over here. We've got our drake, which is a male duck. It's a good wild word, I think. Where next? The meadow. Just follow the trail. Cut deep in the tall grass. So they're gonna follow the trail through the tall grass. Brooke ran ahead, so free, so free, so free. A butterfly, a monarch diving in the breeze. Now you're just like me. So you can see Brooke chasing that monarch butterfly. More wild words. Bright buttercups welcomed them. Yellow petals glistening in the sun, a wild carpet of beauty. Quick, make a wish, said Mimi, holding out a dandelion. Fairy dust sitting on a stem. Blow on it and the seeds will fly, your tiny wishes in the air. Have you ever done this with a dandelion? It's kind of a fun thing to do, right? When you go outside. Tiny wishes in the air. It's a nice way to think of it. Looks like they're having a picnic. At the top of the meadow stood an old willow tree. The shade of the willow was like a dear friend. Mimi had known this tree forever. What a perfect place to have lunch, Mimi said. She took out small sandwiches and apricots, pick, picked from her yard round fuzzy fruit, sweet as can be, the juice dripping with every bite. Rows of lavender lined the field below, filling the air with magic perfume. It's a lot of like beautiful language in this book, right? We're talking about magic and wishes. It's nice to think about that kind of stuff when we're outside too. Nature is real and we can also think about what does the idea of magic feel like, like right? We can think about how that makes us feel like something is really magic. Just then, overhead, Brooke could not believe her eyes. There's a bird cloud flying above us. Oh my, said Mimi. The starlings are back. Such an amazing wonder. So this cloud of birds. So many birds. Thousands of birds swooped, darted, and turned, somehow always staying connected. Then they floated away as mysteriously as they came. Magic and mystery. It's just nature, right? Incredible. Finally, they wandered over to the dense, dark woods. Brooke had always been a little afraid of the forest, but now part of her was wild and she couldn't wait. You can see Mimi walking into the forest. We can see Brooke in the forest. A light rain started to fall, then summer shower. The rain made the smells of the forest come alive and all the plants glisten. The ferns with their magnificent green feathered leaves curled up and then spread out like a fan for everyone to notice. So you can see Brooke there with the ferns. Beautiful. What else do you see, Mimi asked. Brooke looked across the forest floor and sure enough, nestled in the needles was a doe, a deer, curled up like the fern, fast asleep. You can see the doe. And then Mimi says, quiet, quiet, peace and quiet. Walk slowly by, we'll let her be. So they found a doe sleeping in the forest and they moved very quietly so as not to wake her up. In the woods, things appear around corners, tucked deep. Ahead, they heard a rustling. Stop, Mimi said. Walk back slowly towards me. What do we think they might have found in the forest? That they need to be careful around. Right then, a porcupine popped out and ran up a tree. Porcupines, if they're scared, will let their quills fly. Surprises abound in the wild. So you can see that porcupine up there on the tree. They should be careful around that. We should be careful around any wild animal that we run into, I think. Mimi had one last other surprise. You know, my favorite wild word is not on the list, she said. 
It's standing right in front of me. Creepy. A gurgling sound was coming from a clearing, light flickering on a glassy surface. It was a small stream, a brook, dancing, sparkling, singing. It knew exactly where it was going, joyful thread of water cutting through the trees. So we can see our, our brook, and the girl's name in the story is Brook. The last wild word is you, Mimi said. You were named after this tiny stream that your mother always cherished. One could only imagine such a perfect name for the keeper of wild words. So that's nice. They named that little girl after something that they loved in nature, one of those wild words. A hug. Mimi, I never told you what I needed help with, said Brooke. What is it, Mimi said. I need something special for show and tell tomorrow, and now I have it. So this adventure really helped out both of them, it seems like. Peach. The night sky would soon be painted with stars gleaming overhead, a beautiful wild curtain closing on the day. Mimi's wild words were safe. They were shared and remembered, understood, deeply loved. When wild words, when the wild wraps around you, it stays forever in your heart. So that is such an adventure for Mimi and for Brooke. And I really like that the person who wrote this book is named Brooke. And she wrote this story for a reason, because she saw that there was a dictionary that was getting rid of some words. They were just taking them out to make room for other words. And she thought all the words were important. So she wrote this story to include all those words like acorn and wren and starling. And I think those are really neat words too. So maybe what I'll do later today when I go for a walk, if I go for a walk, we'll see. <laughs> but I might think about wild words and make a list, either before or after, or even just looking out my window. I might jot down some of those words of things I see, things I think are important. And maybe I'll keep them in an envelope and I'll hold on to them and make sure that they stick around. Or maybe I'll share them with other people, which I guess is a little bit what I did in this program with all of you today. We shared some wild words. We thought about them. and You can do that too with whoever you've got around you today. All right. Well, that wraps up Storytime Live. Again, my name is Val, and this has been really fun. I hope that you have a great Friday and a fantastic weekend up ahead. Okay. Bye, everybody.